Welcome to Life in Calgary, Alberta. I'm your host, Patrick Murray. And if you're searching for the best place to live in Calgary, Alberta, and you want some advice on how to find the perfect area, then stay tuned, because I'm gonna share some great pointers with you here today. And if this is your first time on this channel, and you wanna know what it's like to eat, sleep, breathe, live, and play in Calgary, Alberta, then guys, just hit that subscribe button and click that little bell so you get notified every single time I release a new video. Now, I've been living in Calgary since 2001, and I've been a realtor here since 2010. So if you are considering a move to Calgary and the area, feel free to send me a text, an email, a phone call, whatever, my information below, I will absolutely get back to you. Searching for the best place to live in Calgary, Alberta? Stay tuned as I share with you how to find the perfect area right after this. Searching for the best place to live in Calgary, Alberta. Hey guys, I get it. Moving is a big deal. And when you're moving to a big city or a new city, you want to get it right. So I'm going to share with you today some advice on how you can find the perfect area for you and your family. Now, keep in mind, it's different for everybody. We've got different priorities in life, so it's different for everybody. But I'm going to share some advice that's applicable to everybody so that you can streamline your search and find the best place to live for you and your family. So the first thing to consider is where will you be working? So if you're moving here and you're relocating for a job, you probably already know where you will be working in the city. Now, for some of you, that might mean you might be working downtown. You could be working in an industrial area. You could be traveling a lot and need access to the airport, or you could be working from home oftentimes. And that could also affect your search because you need room to have that home office and a space to work. So that's something to consider. So you could be on the road for a fair amount of time if you're living in the suburbs and you work downtown, for example. And depending on you and your family and your priorities and what's important to you, that might be okay. For others, it might not be. So guys, let's take a quick look at the map here. All right, guys, here is the map of Calgary. So one of the things when you move to the, our great city is you have to decide where you're going to be working and where you're going to be living, that sort of thing. So uh, let's just zoom in here, and I'm going to just go right to the city core here. So this is the downtown here. This is our, our core of Calgary, if you will, um, in this area, and some of the some of the core neighborhoods and that sort of thing. Now, for example, you know, I I live in uh, an area. Hang on here, just zoom in a little more. I live in this area here, Renfrew. So I can, you know, I used to work on the other side of downtown in Mission. And I used to walk, run, or bike, uh, that sort of thing. So that's an option, depending if you live in the inner city, you might be able to uh, walk, bike, or run, or um, you know, a short trip on transit, that sort of thing. But there's also other areas where people work as well, of course. You know, you might work in uh, uh, an industrial area, for example, you know, down down in this area here over in the the south foothills for example or that sort of thing um you know you could be working in uh who knows you could be traveling a lot and you need access to the airport so let's go up here so here's the calgary international airport in the northeast district of calgary and uh you know sometimes people work out of town you know maybe they work in some of the bedroom communities um you know that sort of thing so you know, these are all things to consider when you are moving. Now, I just will will show you some major thoroughfares here. So um, our major east-west connector here is the Trans-Canada Highway, Highway Number 1, which turns into 16th Avenue and goes through the center of Calgary. So that's one. Uh, the other one is the busiest freeway in all of Alberta which is Deerfoot Trail, and that's the QE2, the Queen Elizabeth II Highway. So that runs north-south, and this will take you all the way up to Edmonton, goes down, continuing down all the way south. This is a very fast road. Um, now, you got to watch out. There's lots going on here. Uh, accidents can occur, so that's something to consider as well. Um, another connector is our ring road, if you will, which is Stony Trail, so it's this um 201 it goes all the way around the city um now there are some areas are still working on here in a few spots but you can see it kind of goes all the way around if you will another good uh, east west connector is glenmore trail which is this 
Highway 8. And then there are lots of other smaller roads that you get to know that go north, south, east, west, that sort of thing. But those are some major ones. Again, McLeod Trail is another one as well uh, that goes up through the uh, through, through the south here. That kind of gets you into the, into the city core, if you will. So these are all major roadways in Calgary. Some areas to consider when you're moving here, where you're going to work and where you're going to live so that uh, you can plan your life accordingly. So one of the things about working downtown, if you do work downtown, you are going to be taking your car is considering parking because you will have to pay to park your car downtown. And Calgary does have some of the highest parking fees in their downtown core than any other city in Canada. So that's something to consider. Uh, the other thing is you might be taking the train or the bus and that's fine. Uh, so you'll have to pay for transit passes, of course, get a pass for the month, that sort of thing. But you also have to consider, you know, where will you be transferring if you have to transfer to a bus or to the train or how long will it take you uh, on your journey from home to the office and back. The other option is carpooling and that's a great option to check out too. If you work in a big office, you know, you can check out the message boards and that sort of thing because uh, there are some mates at work that uh, might be looking for uh, people to carpool with. So that's another option for you and your family. So whatever you decide, just ensure that you always consider where you're going to work when you start your home search and for where you're going to be looking in Calgary, Alberta. Number two on my list is where are your kids going to go to school? Now, this is important for a lot of reasons. And of course, this doesn't apply to everybody. I'm talking about families here with children uh, that need to attend school. So, uh, you know, you need to consider where you're going to live. You're going to need to consider what kind of school you want your kids to go to. So if you're fine with them going to the Calgary Board of Education, that's no problem at all. Lots of great schools here throughout and different communities, that sort of thing. Now, some of the newer communities don't necessarily have the infrastructure in place. So depending on what grade your kids are in and what schools are offered, they may have to take the bus. So that's something to consider as well. So you might have to consider, you know, how long is too long on the bus for my little person? Um, and, and that's a decision that you and your family have to make. Um, the other options that you can check out are the Calgary Separate School District. Um, that's where my kids go. They go to uh, the Calgary Catholic Board, if you will. And uh, that's a great option as well. And I'm going to put the links in the description for the Calgary Board of Education and for the Calgary Catholic School Board as well. So you can check out the schools in the various communities. Now, of course, another option is charter schools and charter schools are great too. You will have to pay, uh, you know, a registration fee um, and a little, a lot more money uh, than going to a public school or a Catholic school uh, for that uh, to happen for your kids, but it is an option. So that's something else you might want to consider if you have a particular private school or charter school in mind. Again, your kids may have to take the bus. So again, that travel time is something that you're gonna to have to think about. Now, you may prefer that your kids walk to school. Hey, that's a great tool. Um, my kids can walk to school if they want to, and uh, that's an option that's available as well. So these are all great things to think about. Think about where your kids are gonna to go to school. Number three for consideration is amenities. What's around you where you want to live? You know, are grocery stores nearby? Are they within the community or do you have to go outside of the community? Uh, you know, if you have to go to the hairdresser, the barbershop, that sort of thing, how far is that? You know, what does that look like, etc. So amenities in a community can be really important for you and your family. So that's something else that you want to consider. Number four is walkability. Now, for some people, this may be important and for other people, it may not be. For example, many inner city communities have a high walkability score um, or a walk score, if you will. They're close to the downtown core. Uh, they're close to uh, grocery stores. They're close to other sorts of shopping. They're close to coffee shops. They're close to parks. They're close to schools. They're close to walking and running trails, etc., etc. Now, that's not to say that some of the communities in the suburbs don't have the same thing. In fact, the trend right now in building the newer communities is to create self-sufficient communities with a high walk score that have lots of amenities as well. But wherever you are moving, if this is important to you, then this is something you want to bring to the attention of your realtor. And if it's not, and you use your car for everywhere you want to go, hey, maybe it's not such a big deal. Number five is, what do you like to do for fun? All right, so 
you know, when you're considering finding a great area to live in in Calgary, you need to think about what you want to do for fun as well as a parameter for your search. You don't want to be all work and no play. So what's important to you? You know, do you uh, do you want to be close to maybe running trails, for example, because maybe you're a runner and you don't want to run on the street or the sidewalk. Um, maybe you want to be close to dog parks because that's an outdoor activity that you like to do. You like to go with your fur baby and take them out and run them around the dog park park and meet other people and other animals and uh, socialize that sort of thing so that's an option maybe you prefer to live on the edge of town because you want quick and easy access to the mountains so that you can go to mountain biking or is he so you can access all the mountain resorts for that world-class scheme so ensure that you're considering what you like to do for fun and fit that into your search to find the perfect area for you and your family so as I mentioned before, if you are considering a move to Calgary, Alberta, or one of the bedroom communities such as Chestermere, Airdrie, Cochrane, or Okotoks, feel free to send me a text, an email, a phone call, my information is below. I will absolutely get back to you so you can start living your life in Calgary, Alberta.